In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to use some of the new design tools available for working with color boards. This applies to owners of PowerDirector 20 or users of PowerDirector 365. We have a video on the screen and let's assume we want to add a color board. To do that, we need to go on the Explorer view, so I click on the little arrow on the left side that will open up that panel and I'm going to click on color boards. Now when I look at this I notice I have lots of options available here that I didn't before. I have solid colors and you notice I have some gradients as well. We have three categories. First of all custom colors. These are ones that you've designed and saved yourself. Then I have a uniform color and these are the standard 21 that we had and then we have a subset now called gradient. Let's start with a uniform color and go back to a couple of things we can do with a solid color board. Let's take the brown one here and drag and drop it onto track 2. And what I'd like to do, let's make the screen smaller here so we can see better in the preview. And I'd like to take this and make it about half size roughly or so. And we'll lower it down to the bottom. So here is a color board covering approximately half of the screen. I can make some changes to it by simply clicking on the Change Color button. And now I can choose any of the colors I like. I can pick, pick them from the basic colors on the left. I can click them from the color range on the right. And I can adjust up and down with my little arrow as well. I can type in the red, green, and blue numbers. Or I can type in the hex numbers. And also modify the hue, saturation, and luminance of my color. So let's take that one and we'll click on OK. Now I have a modified color board. Again, we've already shown you you can change the uh, shape of it, but when you save it, it will save it full screen. Let's click back on Change Color. And in newer versions of PowerDirector, you also can do the Select from Screen. So I click on that. Let's make it the same color as this part of the road. And when I click all OK on it, now it matches that shade of blue. So that's how you can modify a simple solid color. Let's show you some of the newer design tools that are now available. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to open up my side panel again. And we're going to go to gradient color. Here we have a lot more options. So let me take a color board and bring it down. I'm going to take this one. By the way, if you look at what they're called, if I hover over them, they're just na name 01 through 021. Not all that helpful. I'll take and drag it down and drop it. Now again, I'm going to make it smaller than the full screen because we might want to do some things with it. We'll put it in the bottom half. You could make it a real nice lower third if you want. We'll deal with that in the subsequent tutorial. So I have my color. I click on the same change color button, but now notice I have a completely different screen. It tells me I, I can use two kinds of gradients. I can use a linear gradient, which is the default, or I can use a radial gradient. We'll talk more about radial uh, in the next tutorial. Every color here has gradient stops. There's one at the beginning and one at the end. You cannot change the position of either. You also have an opacity. Now the opacity applies to whatever color you're clicked on. You can have one of them to be fully opaque, the other one fully transparent or any degree between. We'll show you some of that. You also have a gradient direction now that's more th than clicking on these tick marks around the compass. You can specify any degree that you want by using the mouse or you can simply by typing in a particular number and move it any place you want. Let's show you the impact of this on the screen here. So we, we go from a kind of a lighter orange to a darker orange by default. Let's change one of these. I'm going to click on the right one. And with that gradient stop selected, I'm going to, to click on Select Color. Now I have the same menu I saw earlier. I can choose any of the basics. I can use the gradations here. I can select from screen. Let me select a slight, just a slightly darker color and click on OK. And now I've changed the look and feel of this. If I want to change left to right and right to left, I just move my gradient direction around. 
and I'll change it. Well, 181 is close enough, and you get to see what it looks like there. Now, if watch what happens when I change the opacity. It will only affect this darker, rust-colored part of it. And now I can see my background through there. It hasn't changed the opacity of the other stop, only that particular stop. Now, if you want to change the opacity of everything, you back, go back to your color board on the timeline, and then you change the opacity there. It will equally affect all of your gradient stops that you might have. Let's turn it back to 100%. You can add a gradient mark very easily. I'm going to click between them. You can also use the plus key, but I find simply clicking below, and I can add, or if it's highlighted, you'll see the little white box around it. I can click the minus and it will make it go away. Now when you're creating a gradient stop, it will inherit whatever value is between uh, the, for, the stop to the left of it and the stop to the right of it. They're not always going to be in either end. But not, no change seems to happen. But then when I take it and it's highlighted and I click on Select Color, let me make this darker in the same range and click on OK. And now I have a different look and feel. Let me change the gradient so it, it points uh, more horizontally. And now we're getting a little bit of a different kind of look in this gradient. Now what I'm going to do is just click another stop. Let's add one over here. And I'll do Select Color. Let's pick a white. And now I have a white gradient. Now I can shove it to the left or shove it to the right. And immediately you'll see the change. The closer they are together, the sharper the effect between the gradient stops. And I could add as many as I want. Now watch what happens. I can actually take the white and move it, cross over the other gradient, and move to the right farther. Now I wish there were a way to expand the screen so I could have a lot longer area and it could be marked where I could have certain values to know exactly where I want the stops to be. But currently I can't do that. But these are some of the way you can add and manipulate the gradient stops that you have in this gradient tool in PowerDirector. And when you're done, if you like to save your work, you can click on Save As, and you can give it a name of your own. I'll just call this Test, and click on OK. Now, it won't save the size of the color board. It will only save it full screen. But we'll show you some more tips on what to do with that, especially with lower thirds, and how to use the other style, the radial style, in the subsequent tutorial.